I'm Laura from kittymakesit.com. I'm here for the relaxed peplum sew along. This pattern is by Mama Can Do It Pattern. Uh, yesterday we did day one, which was um, printing and cutting out the pattern. So we glued it, and if you didn't have any adjustments to make, just um, went ahead and started cutting it and getting ready to cut fabric. Um, so today's kind of um, an in between. We are going to do some adjustments to the pattern um, before we cut it out if you needed those adjustments. So adjustments are needed when you're not the exact height of the size that you're making or you're in between sizes. So in children's patterns, it's very common that they might be one size's height but another size's width. So that makes it actually really easy, in my opinion, to grade. So I have an example here of grading. There's two sizes. I highlighted one in green and one in pink. And the purple line in between shows how you can kind of shift down between a size. In this case, I'm showing um, an upper bust size of a 20 graded down to um, a 20, an 18 in the waist instead of a 20. But for kids' patterns, it's going to look something like a 10 in height and an 8 in width. And so it'd be easy because you just follow the 10 height sizes um, on the length of the pattern and the 8 width sizes through the width. Uh, in kids' patterns, each size is drafted for a different height. But in women's patterns, they're all drafted for the same height. So if you're not exactly 5'5", five five, then you're going to want to um, adjust. Um, also, if you are in between sizes, as the example shows. So to adjust for height, um, if you're adding height, the first thing you're going to want to do is um, decide how many places you need to add the height. If you're only adding um, like a half an inch, then you would um, only want probably to add the height in one place. But if you're needing to add a lot of height, then you're going to want to do this method several places throughout the pattern to make sure that you distribute um, and make it easier to grade. So if for the rule is, for every um, inch that you are different from 5.5, five, you would add or subtract a half an inch because this is just the top pattern. So if you're evenly distributed, then you carry your height um, half in your torso and half in your legs. Um, in my case, I happen to know that I carry all of my additional height in my torso, so I add a full inch in the bodice, um, even though I am um, only 5'6". So I would flash the bodice, cut it um, right above the waist, below the bust, and add an inch of paper in between. If I was 5'4 or 5'3 and wanted to reduce by an inch, um, I show again, I would slash it, and then I would overlap it. So as an example, there's the, um, this is the back, and I slashed it. So I would keep these an inch apart and add paper in between to add length, or I would overlap um, to subtract length, and then go back through and line up the lines again and smooth out these curves um, to adjust for where you subtract the height. So after you've made your height adjustments, another um, adjustment that you might consider would be a full bust adjustment. Um, so rule of thumb is if your upper bust and your full bust differ by four inches, you're going to want to do a full bust adjustment. Um, I'm right on the edge of not really needing one, but I did find that I was getting some of the drag lines that look like a dart um, in the bust, and it did um, help when I did a full bust adjustment. Um, there's other reasons why you might have drag lines um, in your bust, so consider um, what else it might be. Um, if the arm is fitting correctly, uh, make sure that your size to your upper bust size to make sure the shoulders are fitting. Um, but if you think you might need an upper bust, first thing to do would be to measure your upper bust. Um, 
which is going to be um, right in your arm size um, and above the bust. So I have a picture here where I measure. Full bust is um, going to be the fullest part of your bust. For me, that's actually a little bit of an upward angle. Um, that may not be the case for you, so make sure that you're going by your body's dimensions. For a full bust adjustment, the first thing you're going to want to do is find the apex of your bust, which would be um, the, the tallest point. So I've marked it on a pattern piece where I think the apex would be. And then um, you're going to want to make a cut up to the apex. Um, you'll also want to make another cut from the apex to the arm side, um, and you'll hinge that. So then you're going to make a cut coming in from the side so that you have the hinge. Separate it as much space as you need. In my case, um, I found that I needed about an inch. Um, the best way to do that would be to look at the measurements of the pattern and see um, in your upper bust size, what is the um, bust size that's associated with that, and how different um, from that are you. So I separated these about an inch. Um, then this is my um, final pattern piece. You can see um, where I added and subtracted. Um, you're going to need to add some length here to compensate for the adjustments that you made on the other side, uh, which you're going to need that length anyway because you have to make the round um, and not have your waist raise up. This pattern is designed to hit at the natural waist, um, so when you sing the I'm a little teapot song, um, where you bend would be your natural waist, and that's where it should hit. My side waist measurement is 9, which is why um, I needed the extra inch, um, uh, which I put at the bottom, um, for just my regular height. Then the full bust adjustment, I also need a little bit of extra um, uh, length to get over the bust. So um, you'll want to readjust it. If you have a really um, significant full bust adjustment, it's likely that in the center fold, you may have a lower pattern piece that then grades into the side seam. You want to keep the side seam the same so that it matches your side waist, but if you need additional length, it's okay to have a curve coming to the front center. So now, um, another adjustment you might um, consider is a sway back. Um, a sway back adjustment is when you kind of have a, um, a flat spot at the back of um, your bodice where it usually meets your hip measurement. So in my case, I get a lot of um, extra wrinkles um, just above my rear end, my lower back. Um, so in order to pinch and remove um, that, it's really, really easy to do on a pattern where the bodice has a skirt that attaches because you can just um, slice off a piece of the bottom. So this is my bottom bodice, and you can see the pink line is where the bodice should normally end. If I use the purple line, I'm going to have a little less height right in the center back, um, which is going to bring my skirt up a little bit. So if you also need a full rear adjustment to make sure that the skirt is covering your rear, um, consider adding some length in the center middle of your um, skirt piece. But in, in the case of this top, um, I don't worry about that. Um, I'm also not doing that significant of a sway back here, but it's just enough to keep me from having kind of that fabric pooling back there. So once all your pattern pieces are, are done, um, I like to really reinforce mine with extra paper on the back. Um, because I know that I'm going to be making this over and over and over again, and this um, has helped it so that I can keep making this pattern because I just pull it out and uh, add a few pieces of tape each time I use it to put it back together, but um, you're going to want to make sure that you've really secured it with all of your adjustments, and I also like to write reminders to myself of what I adjusted so that if 
it doesn't work out or in, if I change sizes, um, I know how to go back and fix that without maybe having to reprint and start over. So now it's time to start cutting fabric. Um, grab all of your pattern pieces and grab your fabric. Start to lay it out on a table. You're going to want to find the selvage of your fabric. The selvage usually has um, some sort of a white border. If it doesn't, like if you're working with a solid, um, you'll notice usually some curling on the selvage side. Um, but if all else fails, you can measure. Knit fabric is 60 inches wide and then however much yardage you've ordered long. Um, the wide side is the side that stretches. On something like this, this is double brushed polyester, there's four-way stretch, so there's more stretch width-wise than length-wise, but there is four-way stretch. This is Santa Fe from Amelia Lane Designs. It's actually a very heavy double brush poly. So um, I like to really save as much fabric as I can. So you're going to see that I'm going to refold several times until I get the exact width that I need to cut the pattern piece. So the reason that I refold um, is so that I don't have any wasted space. These pattern weights are made out of um, washers from the hardware store. I used one inch washers with um, just some ribbon wrapped around them. I'm using a 45 millimeter rotary blade. Um, this is actually just a Friskers brand. Um, I picked it up at Joann's on some kind of a sale. I want to say um, it was one of the clearance days and it was very cheap and I liked that it was colorful. Um, I haven't really liked the blades that it came with as much um, and they're really expensive. So I buy replacement blades on Amazon um, for really cheap and I replace often. Um, I notice that when I hit the um, center of my board, I often can nick my blade and need to replace it. Um, it's important to have a really sharp blade because otherwise you'll be getting kind of frustrated going kind of fast and you'll cut yourself. And that's me how I know. So the next thing you're going to see is that I'm refolding again. Um, sorry for the peace sign. That's how I'm focusing the camera. Um, I refold continually until um, I'm using up as much of the fabric as I can. I got really lucky and the arm is going to the sleeve is going to fit in the excess width after I cut the skirt. Um, I cut a notch in the top of the sleeve, um, or rather um, a triangle, so that it makes it really easy for me to line that up with the shoulder seam when I'm assembling. So I draw that onto my pattern piece because I often forget to cut it if it's not there. Be sure you're always cutting um, with the stretch and the width going across your body. The length goes down, um, the width always goes across. Um, it, it took me a while to remember that at first, so I had to make up all sorts of things. And um, It sort of helped me to think about if I'm ordering a maxi dress, I'm going to order more fabric because I need it to be longer, so I kind of always picture holding it up and holding a maxi length down would be the length and therefore this is the width. Um, I often, when I first started out, had to check several times as I cut each piece. And even now, I occasionally find that I accidentally cut something the wrong way, um, especially on a solid. So thank you for um, joining me with day two. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed um, learning a little bit more about how to do adjustments before you cut the fabric. I think the majority of the work happens on paper um, when you're sewing. It's actually very deceptive. But once you have those, you can just sew those over and over and over again, and the fit will always be perfect. So join me for day three, where we're finally going to start sewing. We're going to assemble the peplum all in one day, um, which is going to leave some time on day four to do some really cool um, hacks, meaning um, make some options to this pattern that aren't available as part of the pattern um, and I'm going to show you some fun things that you can do because once you have a well-fitting pattern you can add all the options you want. 
thank you for watching. And uh, you can always find more of me all on kittymakesit.com.